Hello, Richard from BudgetGuitars.com. It's another field trip today. We're going to go to Guitar Center in Clearwater, Florida. And before we do that, we're going to go grab some lunch. I know a really, really, really good Chinese place that serves really good food. Unfortunately, I can't go there today because it's quite a distance from here. So I'm going to have to settle for... There, that's where we're going. I mean, it's not bad. It's okay. Uh, at least it's not McDonald's, right? Let's go inside. I'm not going to film a lot of the driving footage because some people don't like to see the driving footage. Some people do like to see it. Some people don't like to see it. Lovely. Lovely. We've arrived. All right, I'm going in. Okay. Guitar Center Lesson Booths. When you first enter the store on your right, there are several lesson booths for people to take lessons there. I do not know anything about lessons at Guitar Center. If you do, please tell us in the comments section. Books, sheet music. In the corner, there are racks with books, sheet music, DVDs, Blu-rays, posters, and a bunch of other stuff that I'm not interested in. Uh, maybe you are. I don't know. Uh, you can buy a book with tab and all that kind of jazz. Yeah. Next is the repair center where you can pay somebody to fix your guitar or you can pay somebody to put strings on it. Don't pay to have somebody put, don't pay to have somebody put strings on your guitar, please. It's not that hard to learn. Trust me, you can do it. There's a lot of videos on YouTube. I think I might even have one. Uh, you can also buy parts here, including pickups which we'll get to a little later. They've got a good stock of guitars at this point in time, which is nice to see. Uh, back in the days of the, uh, the height of the pandemic, inventory was pretty scarce, but looks like things are starting to get back to normal now, which is great. But long gone are the days of taking an American Strat off the wall to try it out. They're all locked up now, so you need a salesperson. I don't blame them. I mean, people bang guitars around and stuff like that. Hey, look, Tex-Mex pickups. I did make a video about mine. They're, they're like a slightly toned down Texas special to me. A little more chime, a little less grime. Fender should actually use that. They sound great. I think, you know what it is? I did a shootout, uh, Tex-Mex versus Texas specials. And uh, which one sounds better? Who knows? It's up to you. I own them both. I like them both. Okay, now we're in budget land. This is my kind of area. This is my kind of town. Let's uh, let's look at a few guitars. This PRS Mark Holcomb seven string sells for ten ninety nine new. So this is three hundred dollars off. I think that's a good price. It was also in good shape, but I wouldn't know what to do with the extra string. Honestly, here's a Squire. Tally Paranormal for $2.99. Now these are $3.99 new, so that's definitely a good deal. I would buy one, but I've got two tellies already. I think this is a great guitar for $2.99, honestly. I think it's cool. Here are a couple of Epiphone Les Pauls for around $600. Wasn't that long ago you can get an Epi Les Paul for $350 any day of the week, but now, if you find one for under $500, it's a good deal. I mean, I obviously like the Epiphone Les Pauls because I have two of them. So here's a random shot of some used guitars. During the height of the pandemic, there were no used instruments here or almost any music store. No one had any. I'm very glad to see them back because I like to buy stuff used because as you can see, you can save a lot of money that way. And if you're on a budget, that's great. So the Fender Ventera Strat is an, a $1,199 made in Mexico Strat. So $719 is a good price for this instrument, but I'm still coming to grips with Mexican Strats at low American prices. 
Now, today's Mexican strats are better than they were 10 years ago. That's for sure. Well, in my opinion. But it's, it's still, it still seems a little pricey to me. There are a lot of used budget Gretches out there, not just here, but the other stores too. And I think that's because they, they were sold at a pretty reasonable price, and I think they sold a lot of them. Honestly, I think they're great for the money. I'm surprised I haven't bought one yet. Give it time, give it time. I'll tell you what though, the pickups are not that great. The guitar, I think, is really good. The pickups, probably, if you swap them out for something better, you'd be happy. But, you know, your opinion may vary. Used to be able to find Epiphone Les Pauls for $350 all day long. Hey, we're just talking about that. $464 for a used Epiphone Les Paul is definitely a good deal. You know, I gotta admit though, I prefer the darker fretboards. To me, they just look cooler, they look more pro. But I wouldn't let that prevent me from buying a guitar. However, if I have a choice, I like the darker fretboards. So here's a Wolf guitar. Anybody ever heard of that? Tell me in the comments section if you have. It's, it's not often I see a brand I've never heard of. Wolf? Hmm, I don't know anything about it. So here's an Epiphone SG Muse for 339 and I think that's a good deal. I don't own any type of SG, but you know I'd like to. If I were looking, this would be a good one. Several good deals in this trip today. I'm pretty pleased with that. Here's a used Fender Player Strat for $574. I guess that's a good price, but I'd want to pay $500 or less for a MIM Strat. I mean, that's just me. I remember when they were $300 or even $350. Wasn't that long ago. Ah, yes, inflation. Used amps. Anything that says boogie will cost money. They sound good. No, they sound great, but they're not cheap. They're, they're out of my price range. Fender solid state amps are always available, new and used. And personally, I wouldn't hesitate to buy a Fender Champion amp if I only wanted the clean tones. The gain tones are so-so in my opinion. Ah, the Line 6 Catalyst. I may get into trouble with this one. People watch these YouTube channels looking for validation. If you bought a Catalyst, good for you. I think they sound good clean, but when people rave about like the crunch sounds, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't like them at all. Now, that's just my opinion. So here's a used Fender Mustang 1 for $86. I had a Mustang 2 and I thought it was great value for the money. I would definitely buy this over one of those other sub $100 teeny tiny practice amps. This would sound very good in a bedroom. This is a good deal. You know, you can always find Marshall DSL-40 or DSL-40C used. They are a very popular amp and they are all over the place. I like the DSL-40 a lot, I really do, but I think I'd want to pay a teeny bit less than this one. It's not a bad price though. Hmm, speaking of the Fender Paranormal Tele, we were just talking about this. It's a good guitar for $399 brand new. I mean, yeah, these are cool. Just look at it, just look. Replace that bridge and you're on to something. Now, you might wonder why I say that. Why would I say replace the bridge on a telly? Well, I will do a telly video and I'll go into it pretty deeply. I'll do a telly, I'll do a telly video pretty soon, actually. So over in the corner of the store here, there's a rack with some Epiphone Les Pauls with snapped headstocks. And uh, all of these have snapped headstocks. And who says that only happens to Gibson Les Pauls? This is why they lock up the good stuff, people. This is why you can't pull an American Strat off the wall. I mean, I do feel bad for the company a little bit. On the other hand, I'm assuming that like a customer broke these and not a clumsy employee. So they've got a room for drums and no guitar player can visit Guitar Center without walking through and looking at the drums. We all want to secretly play drums. Most of us don't have room for them or we can't handle the noise. I can play a little drums, but I'm much better at programming them than playing them. But electronic drums are cool. They take up less space and make almost no noise. 
But you know what? The inexpensive sets look like toys. You make a $600 electric set that looks like a real drum set, you'd be super rich. Everybody would buy one. I have no idea why no one has done that yet. Here's a sweet kit by PDP. I mean, you can buy a real drum set for around $600. Why can't they make an electronic drum set look like this? The shells don't even have to be super thick. The wood could be cheap. As long as they're shiny, as long as they're shiny and they look cool, somebody is going to eventually figure this out. I mean, they make them now that look like real drums, but they cost a fortune. There's a free headache with every visit if you try out cymbals in the cymbal room. Personally, I dislike cymbals. I've gotten to the point where I'm making them barely audible when I mix. I mean, Peter Gabriel did an entire album with no cymbals. Uh, I, I, it's a good album, too. So now, if you don't have a cymbal crash in a song, it sounds funny, but man, I bury those things. Anyway, there are lots of used Marshall Origin amps around. You ever notice that? Speaking of amps I don't like, the Origin was a Marshall amp with no gain. I don't see that as a good thing. Well, the concept is you were supposed to buy a tube screamer and put it in front of it, you know, just like the 1970s. So an amp that requires a pedal. I already lived through the 70s. I don't need such amps now. Here's some expensive strats in the expensive room. They've got a small semi-soundproof room where Dennis can go in and try out $3,000 PRS guitars. They play the four blues licks that they know and then they buy the instrument. I'm just kidding. It's nice to have a room where you can crank an amp honestly. It, it is a really good idea. Some music stores don't have this. So if I wanted to buy an amp from here, I actually have bought an amp from here before. I bought a Hot Rod Deluxe 3 from this very store. And it was a great amp, but quite frankly, it was too heavy and too loud. Great amp though. Oh look. Another origin amp with no gain to speak of. Quick, get thee a tube screamer. So here's the Dennis Blues guitar section. It's a few expensive guitars that I can never afford. I mean, that's not true actually. You, you've seen my videos, right? I could afford to have like two of these or I could have my entire 20 guitar collection that's taken me like 15 years to put together. I would personally rather have the collection. But that's just me. If I were a touring musician, I'd take the two really good guitars. Here's a few lower end Gibson Les Pauls. So we're talking like tributes and studios. Gone are the days of finding a used Gibson Les Paul studio for $700. I mean, I'd say $1,100 is about fair. And if you can find a used Gibson Les Paul anything for under a grand, you should probably buy it. I mean, as long as we're in Clearwater, we might as well go in Sam Ash real quick. I just want to see if there's anything cool in here. Well, look at this. It's a Mesa Boogie or Mesa, depending on how much you care, amp for a mere $5.99. What was I just saying about how expensive these were? This is a budget boogie, but still, that's a good price. So here's a Marshall Vintage Modern, $999 used. Now new these go for around 1800, so I would say that's a really good deal. That's a great deal. And you know what? I think that's a great sounding amp. Like this is why I buy used. That's probably the best thousand dollar amp in the store. Okay, over in PA land, look at this. This is a pair of powered JBL Eons with 15 inch woofers for $500 for the pair. Like this particular Sam Ash always gets the best used PA gear, honestly. I mean, you add a sub and you could use these as front of house with a band in a bar easily. I've seen bands gig with these and they were plenty loud. They're lightweight, they sound good, 500 bucks a pair, they're cheap. I already have a PA, otherwise this would be a great deal to snap up. I love this place. So here's a pair of used Mackie 12 inch unpowered speakers for $200. Now, if you already own a power amp, 
This is a good deal. The old Mackie speakers sounded darn good for the money, honestly. I mean, I'd rather have powered speakers these days, but if you have the amp, that's a good deal. Any keyboard players recognize this? I didn't, honestly. I had to look it up. It's a multi-moog. So apparently this was a budget-friendly version of the mini moog. It used the same circuit board as the mini moog, but it, it uh, cut a few other corners. Uh, but it also added aftertouch. I've never seen one before. And it could be yours for a mere $3,799. Or you could buy a plug-in for under $50. And no one except Thomas Dolby would know the difference. But I do admit, if I were a millionaire, I'd buy every stinking vintage synth I could get my hands on. Because they are very cool. They're not cost-effective, but... People who have vintage synth collections, they don't buy them because they're cost effective. I mean, I kind of look at it, you know, and I kind of snicker when, when I see somebody dropping 20 grand on stuff that plugins can basically do. But on the other hand, I'm secretly envious. I don't mind admitting that. I'm definitely envious. I'd love to have a real DX7, but I don't want to buy one. And the plugin sounds just as good, honestly. So look at this. How cool is that? Not, not the guitar and the amp, although that's not a bad deal. I'm talking about the Kiss Rock and Roll Over Rug. Man, that's cool. I totally want one of those. So there you go. That concludes our shopping trip. What I really came for was two sets of guitar strings, which I bought at Guitar Center. I just didn't film that part. You don't need to see that. I looked at a bunch of cool stuff. I made a video, I got some strings, I had some lunch. That's not a bad way to spend a Saturday afternoon. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again next Friday at 5.